Let's do hands-on to learn S3 storage classes. I'm on the S3 console. First, let's create a bucket. Click on Create Bucket. Let me copy and paste the bucket name to avoid typing. The region is US East Northern Virginia, which is my default region. Object Ownership. Default is fine. Let's scroll down. Rest All. Default values are OK. Click on Create Bucket. Now the bucket has been created. Select the bucket. Let me upload one file to this bucket. I'll choose beautifulspring.jpg. Now the file is uploaded. Click on the file. Now let's look at the storage class of this object. Click on Edit. Here we have options for different storage classes. Let's look at each of them. First, we have the standard storage class, which is the default one what it means. You upload an object.s3. Default, it will be in the standard storage class. Then we have intelligent tiering, which is the best option if we don't know about the data access pattern for your S3 objects. And let S3 decide what is the most efficient option to do data tiering. In that case, we choose the intelligent tiering option. Standard IA storage class. You can use this storage class when your data is accessed infrequently, but you still want low latency of milliseconds. One zone IA. This is a good option when you have a recreated type of infrequently accessed data with low latency of milliseconds. Since objects using this storage class are stored in only one availability zone, there is a risk of losing data if there is any issue with the availability zone. That's why this storage class should be used only when the data can be recreated if lost. Then we have three Glacier types of storage classes. Glacier Instant Retrieval, Glacier Flexible Retrieval, and Glacier Deep Archive. It also displays here various important details about them. Then finally, the Reduce Redundancy Storage class is used for non-critical frequently accessed data with milliseconds access. However, this is not recommended, as S3 standard is more cost-effective. In other words, it can be assumed that the Reduce Redundancy Storage class is sort of deprecated. Let's change the storage class of the object to Standard IA. As you can see, the object storage class is changed to standard IA. You can edit it and change the storage class, for example. One zone IA. You can also change the storage class to glacier types. This was about how to change the storage class of an object manually. You can also set up a lifecycle rule to automate the process of moving objects between storage classes. Let's go to the bucket. And then under management, you can create lifecycle rules. Let's create a lifecycle rule. Enter a name, demo lifecycle rule. For rule scope, let's apply this rule to all objects in the bucket. That way, this rule will apply to all objects in the bucket. Check the acknowledge checkbox. For lifecycle rule actions, Say, move correct versions of objects between storage classes. Here you can set a transition. Move to standard IA 30 days after object creation. You can set another transition to move to the intelligent tiering storage class, 60 days after object creation. You can also set another transition to move to glacier flexible retrieval, 180 days after the object creation. Check the acknowledge checkbox. You can review all the transition rules you set up for this lifecycle rule. Click on the Create Rule. As you can see, we have set up the lifecycle rule for this bucket that will automatically move objects from one storage class to the other storage class, based on how we have set up various transitions for the lifecycle rule. Lifecycle rules automate moving objects between storage classes, which help manage S3 storage costs.